This is a spirit that we're dealing with. These are wicked spirits that are set out on an assignment to keep you from fulfilling God's purpose and destiny for your life. And he's using vulnerable people who are walking in their flesh. Like I said, he can use whoever he wants. If you got an open door, they might open the door through sin, some sin that they've not let go of. And the God has now used them. I mean, the devil has now used them. He has played on their envy and their anger. He has played on the fact that they're bitter over the fact they never had a father or mother to raise them or take care of them, or they didn't have a relationship with one of their parents. He's played on the fact that they've been abused as a child or, or, or maybe you were even born out of an abusive situation. Maybe they were raped and they didn't want you. And they, instead of seeking God and asking him to let, help them let go of that pain and unforgiveness, they projected it on you and abused you instead of, of coming to, to God. Because every child is a gift from God, whether it came out of abuse or not. It is not the child's fault that they got here and how they got here. It's not the child's fault. These are innocent children. They should not have to pay for what happened in your life. They should not have to bear, be born and nailed to a cross for sin that was done to you that they had nothing to do with. And a lot of you are making your children pay. You have hated your child because you messed around with the wrong man or your, the man you had, the child would didn't treat you right or your marriage failed or, or, or that child came out of a, 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 a your, your uh, uh, infidelity and adulterous relationship. That's not that child's fault. And you are wrong to hold a grudge against that child. You are wrong to put curses on that child. You are wrong for everything you've done. And God is saying today, if you do not repent and confess to me, you will not enter into my kingdom. I will shut the doors in your face. <laughs> everyone my name is Kwamea Ross and today my message is called the dangerous effects of household witchcraft now first I want to talk about what is household witchcraft now if you all know God has chosen certain people in the family there's always a blessed anointed person in the family not to say that everyone else is not blessed or favored but there's always one person who has been chosen to stand out who has been chosen to lead their family and, and to do some type of miraculous thing for God whether it, it, it involves bringing that entire family out of bondage or, or something else God has put his favor and anointing on a certain person in the family and not and usually this person is always looked at as either the black sheep, they're they're rejected, they're ostracized, and they face a lot of tribulation and trouble from those who are in their family, those who are close to them. Now, I want to talk about first I want to talk about some instances in the Bible where there were people who were chosen by God to do things. They they had a favor and a destiny on their lives that were very great, and the enemy used the family to come up against them. For example, Joseph. And many of you read the story. Everyone in the church just about knows the story about Joseph, who had the coat of many colors. Joseph was the youngest son of his father. His father had him in his old age, and for that reason, Joseph was highly favored. He was his uh, father's uh, favorite child. He gave Joseph this coat that was made out of many colors. Now, Joseph had a gift. He had a, a gift of prophecy, and he had these dreams and visions, and he kind of ran his mouth off, and he would tell his brothers these dreams, and his brothers were in this. For one, they knew that the calling was on his life, that he was not an ordinary child, that he was extraordinary. Also, again, like I said, he was his father's favorite child. And so his brothers were very envious to the point they became filled with hatred. And they plotted first to try and kill him. And they knew they couldn't get away with doing that. So eventually they sold him off into slavery, his own brothers. And so God turned that around. If you know about the story, I'm not going to go over it. But Joseph was hated. And his own family came up against him. Now, another person who faced tribulation from his own family was David. David's own father, when, when God had sent Samuel to anoint someone to be, you know, the next king of Judah, his own father left him out, called all his brothers and left uh, David back there tending to the sheep as if he didn't have any other sons. And so, you know, the prophet Samuel, listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, had asked the father, inquire, you know, are those all your sons? And David faced a lot of rejection and tribulation. His own brothers would mock him and make him seem insignificant. And so the reason why I'm talking about this is because there are a lot of people who have been in families where they have a calling on their lives. They're, they're, they stand out for a reason because God has placed favor on them. God has put, put talents and gifts inside of these people where they're not ordinary. They're extraordinary. And a lot of time, the devil, the devil knows the plans 
And when your family comes up against you, a lot of time it's, it's the devil who has plotted and, and planned this. Now, what I want to talk about is household witchcraft. Because what this does, this is a very dangerous thing that works up against the people who God have called to do great things. And when you have your family come up against you, family can not only come up, they can also come up against you, not only physically, but they can come up against you spiritually, which is even worse. When you have people doing things spiritually in the family to, to come up against you, to stop you from fulfilling God's destiny and calling your life, could it, it could be out of jealousy, uh, envy, hatred, anger, or bitterness, or anything. And this is why God tells us to crucify our flesh on a daily basis, because when we do not crucify our flesh, we're susceptible to, you know, falling for the wiles and traps of the enemy. We walk into the plot that the enemy has for us. If you're walking around with bitterness and hatred and you hate your brother, the devil can use you to do wicked things. Just like Joseph's brothers. What did they do to him? Joseph's own brother sold him into slavery. Not only that, you had when we talk about the story of Esau and Jacob, Jacob was a swindler. Before he was changed and before God turned him into a new man, he deceived his own brother Esau out of his birthright. And so these are the type of things that when we walk in our flesh, the enemy can use us to hurt our own family. Now, I want to tackle this because I meant, I spent many years not fulfilling God's destiny. For a long time, I was you know, pitted up against, there were so many, so many oppositions, so much resistance, so much uh, tribulation and suffering in my life. And I did not know it. It took many years for God to finally show me that how many people were coming up against me. And these are people you wouldn't even suspect. These are people in my own family who are very close to me. And the devil had gotten a foothold on them because of the bitterness that they held. They did not forgive for one. They had been very hurting people. For example, I talked about a lot about the story about my father and how I learned how all these things my father would do was practicing witchcraft against me. And for many years, I was not able to walk in the, the, the destiny that God had planned for me. My own father was coming up against me and doing these things. And that's because he had bitterness in his heart. He didn't have a father, you know, to, to love him and nurture him. He didn't have a mom to care for him. And it's like he held on to this unforgiveness that he became so bitter that he took it out on me. And so this is why God wants us to forgive. You might have grown up in a household where you didn't have mother or fa a father to care for you. You might have been put in foster care. You might have had an abusive parents or parents who neglected you, did not help you and did not treat you right. But God, he wants to turn that around. You have to forgive in order for God to fix it. You can't hold on to that anger and that pain because if you hold on to it, a root of bitterness is going to start growing. Seeds of bitterness are going to be planted and it's going to root up as a a root of bitterness that's going to be hard to contain. And then you find yourself not projecting that anger and hatred and bitterness out on other people. And so my father, like I said, my father did not have that type of life. So he could not give me the love. He would always talk about what, what his what his parents didn't do for him and what did not happen for him. And so see, this is why I want to talk about now is the household witchcraft. Now, household witchcraft is basically people in your family who have conspired together to do spiritual occult things they are utilizing witchcraft sorcery voodoo all types of demonic uh weapons to stop you from fulfilling god's purpose on your life now it's hard to believe this okay a lot of you might not believe that there's someone in your family but majority of the time when there is resistance and opposition, we cannot walk in the, the favor and the blessings and the promises that God has for us is because someone in our family who is close to us is doing things. This is called household witchcraft. This could be a mother. It could be a father. It could be a sibling. It could be your brother. It could be your sister. It could be your cousin. It could be your aunt. It could be your grandmother. It could be any of those people. Now, I know we all wish we came from a family where everyone was perfect and did everything God told them to do and were obedient to God, but that we're, we don't live in a perfect world. And sadly, there are a lot of people who out of hurt, pain, anger, rebellion, disobedience, or whatever there is, can fall susceptible to being used by Satan. Anyone can be a vessel of Satan. I say this all the time. If you are not exercising, to, to exercising, meaning actively making it, it your habit to walk in righteousness, you have to actively do it. That's why it says to put on our whole armor. We have to every day put on this armor. You have to make a conscious, conscientious choice to do this. Okay. You can't just wake up one day and just walk in righteousness you have to work at it it's just like when you get up every day and put on your clothes you have to shower and brush your teeth you don't just get up and and, and and you know be cleaned up you have to put effort into it and so a lot of people don't put forth the effort to walk in righteousness they get up if they feel angry they just go ahead and do it now 
you're not supposed to give into your emotions. This is why God tells us not to walk in our flesh. When we're walking in our flesh, the enemy can use us to do whatever he wants. And a lot of time, the enemy goes after people who have been mistreated, who have dealt with a lot of suffering, a lot of rejection, a lot of abuse. And he will use you to become bitter towards a person who you might think, okay? First of all, if God has put favor on someone in your family, it's not for you to get jealous of them because a lot of, the majority of the time, when God chooses someone in the family and gives favor to them, that person is not only supposed to, that's not just to benefit them, it's to benefit the family. And I, I, I when you sit here and, and, and attack that person and make them the black sheep, you're messing up your blessings also. I talk about this because a lot of people, I've been, my entire family has come up against me. Just about my entire family. And the Lord has revealed things to me. People have done things and I am like, you know, I still to this day cannot believe why. And it, and it hurts. It's like I sat here and, and wasted is like 20 or 30 years of my life has been wasted because I could have been at the level where I was supposed to have been. And, and these people have been doing these things. The Lord has opened my eyes to all these people doing witchcraft, doing things, evil things, hijacking my destiny, taking my purpose. Yes, this stuff happens. And this is because people are envious. They might feel they don't know what you, you're facing, but they're just looking out on the outside. They know that that they think that you have a better life than them. They see that you have some type of favor. They see that you might be smart. You might have some type of talent that God is going to use. You might have some type of, of wisdom or knowledge or, or, or something on your life that God is going to use and they're jealous of it. And these people will go out of their way to try and stop you. So I'm talking about this now because first of all, I want to first tell you, I don't want people to waste as much time as I've wasted. And I think it's, 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 an, it's the biggest injustice to have your own family coming up against you. But like I said, when people are holding on, harboring on to bitterness, pain, anger, resentment, they won't let it go and give it to God. Then the devil can come in here and start using them. So this is why we're not supposed to be envious. Everything that God talks about his Bible tells us not to do is for a reason. When he tells us not to hate, not to go to bed angry. That's because when you go to bed angry, that anger can fester overnight. Okay. He says to let it go quickly. We're supposed to let go of it. Or it says also be angry and sin not. It's okay to have anger. We have emotions of anger, but we're not supposed to hold on to that anger. We're not supposed to allow that anger to control our actions and, and the way we behave towards other people. There might be things that people have done wrong to us, but we're supposed to take it to God. We don't get vengeance on our own. That's why it says in the Bible, vengeance is mine, I shall repay. Everyone has done something wrong. We can't act as judges over our lives or over the lives of anyone else. We can't decide what punishment to give a person because they've done wrong to us. God is the judge. A lot of times we can be biased and we might think someone's hurt us and we don't know what the reason is. We don't know why it happened. And, and, and sometimes they might not have even hurt us. It's just the way we perceived it. And this is why God says, go to him. If you have all with your brother, you're supposed to go to him and go to that brother and work it out with him. You're not supposed to hold on to that anger. You're not supposed to hold on to that pain and you're definitely not supposed to hurt your brethren. And there's so many people out here who are, are, are doing this. And again, these are not the people. You can't, all, you can't look at the people because the devil is using these people. When you have people who are doing witchcraft against you and doing all types of evil things, the devil has used them. Yes, it's, it, the devil would not have been able to use them if they would not have been angry in the first place or if they have not been jealous of you in the first place. Yes, the devil used their fleshly emotions and allowed, and, and allowed an opportunity for him to get a hold of them and, and to, to, and to influence their actions and behaviors towards you. So this is a spiritual thing and household witchcraft is very dangerous. A lot of people right now are sitting on the sidelines, have not been able to fulfill the destiny and the, the great purpose that God had on their lives because they've allowed, there have been people in their family who are jealous of them and did everything in their power to keep them back. And these people are oblivious. They don't even know. Now, what we're supposed to do every, this is why we're supposed to pray for God's will to be done. Jesus Christ tells us how to pray in the Bible and Matthew, it tells us that we're supposed to pray. And one of the parts of the prayer, it says, for thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We're supposed to pray every day that the will of God will be done in our lives, not the will of our mother or our neighbor or our brother or our sister or our auntie or our uncle. The will of God is supposed to be done in our lives. We're supposed to loose ourselves from all strongholds of bondage. We're supposed to put on the armor of God and make sure we're not walking in our flesh. Because again, when you're walking in your flesh, you're out of line with, well, you're not in alignment with God's will. 
When we're walking in our flesh, we're holding on to anger, bitterness, jealousy, all types of wrongdoings that's been done to us. And, and sometimes you're even operating out of fear. There have been people who have held their children back because they were afraid. They were afraid for their kids to leave the home because they thought something was going to happen to them. And they've kept their children from living their destinies because of fear. And that is not an excuse. God's going to deal with you because you know what? When God has a purpose for someone, it is he's impacting lives and when you stop that person from 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 working out walking in that destiny he has you have affected those lives that they were supposed to impact and you have also caused yourself to miss out on that blessing so at the end of the day when when we all have to stand in judgment before god he's going to come to us and say what have you done with the life i've given you and you're going to have to give account for everything you've done and said with this, this life how you use your gifts and talents what have you done the evil things you've done to other people and, and we've all sinned and, and been wronged yes we've all done wrong things but have you asked for forgiveness have you repented have you made amends to the people you've hurt it's not good enough sometimes just say sorry you have to make amends when you do wrong to people you have to fix it you have to correct it now let's start talking about how to the signs of household witchcraft there are certain signs that follows a person. When you have a lot of hardship and you see that you're not able to do things in life, you might have been striving all your life and you always find yourself struggling. Every time you reach some type of success in life, all of a sudden you you fall back. You like you're starting to go backwards. You lose that progress. Then that is a sign that someone in your family has loosed out a curse or did something, some type of evil incantation and put it over your life and is working it and using it against you. Now, in the Bible, it says that we are blessed. What God has blessed cannot be cursed. But we also have to be mindful every day because people are out here. If there is some type of foothold, there is some type of opening, these curses can work against us. And I've talked about this before. If you have any unrepentant sin in your life, any unconfessed sin that you're actively dealing with, or you have not forgiven anyone and you're holding on to forgiveness, then God does not have to forgive you. So that gives room for these curses to work against you. So if someone wants to put a curse out on you and stop you from doing something, guess what? If you have unforgiveness that you're holding on to, that curse is now active in your life. If you have sin that you're, you're actively participating in and you have not confessed and stopped and let go of that sin, guess what? Now someone who's cursed you, those curses are going to take effect in your life. If you're living in rebellion and you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you're being disobedient to God and you're not using the gifts in the way he told you, that's disobedience and that's a sin. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft. So now you're actively doing witchcraft. Guess what? If someone does witchcraft against you, it's going to work. And this is things that people don't know. When we walk in rebellion... We're opening the door for our own selves to, to, to be cheated out of our, our destinies and our purpose. Look at Esau. Esau, he did not care about his birthright. He was reckless when it came to his birthright. He did not care about his own birthright. And since he looked at his birthright as being trivial, Jacob was able to swindle him out of his birthright because Esau himself did not care about his own birthright. And since he did not care about it, Jacob was able to take it from him. A lot of us have been out in the world doing things, not living righteously according to God, and people were able to take things from us. I am a big example of that. I talk about it all the time where I was a hurting girl. I got angry at God. I left the church. I went out in the world. And as a result, people were able to do things. People in my family were able to do things, even though they were doing things before then. It was more to a degree now that I walked away from God's covering. Everyone in their, their mama, whoever decides to put out a curse upon me, they did it and it was effective. And for a long time, I was walking around not seeing any type of favor on my life, seeing all of my blessings just, just trickling, dwindling out of the window, wondering what's going on, Lord. I know you gave me these promises. Why is my life like this? And it took God to let me know that since I had rebelled against him and walked away from him and was living out in the world, I had no covering and that the door was open for the enemy to do whatever he wanted to do in my life. Yes, God still held his hand on me and kept me alive, but he did not protect me from anything else at that time because I was living out in the world and being rebellious. Now, another thing, when our parents put curses on us, again, when your parents, your parents are supposed to be a covering, especially your father. When your father's actively engaged in sin or putting curses on your life, that trickles down upon you. So when you're a child and you're living on your father's roof, if you have a father who is cursing you and doing things to you, that is going to affect your life. 
and it's going to affect you. This is why parents are supposed to submit themselves to God and not provoke their children to anger. Us as parents, we're supposed to be making sure that we walk in righteousness every single day. We're supposed to be dealing with our flesh and crucifying it every day and making sure that we're not doing things that will hurt and damage our children. Because at the end of the of this lifetime, we're going to have to give an account to God of how we treat the children that God gave us. These are his children. And when we have these children, he's letting us borrow them and he expects us to treat them right. When he gives us something, he, he wants to know how we're going to take care of it. So I talk about this all the time, whether you've been given a spouse by God, whether you've been getting given children or parents, we have to honor these, these things because these are blessings from God. These are good things. And we're not supposed to take advantage of anything God has given us. He's going to access how we've, we've treated, how we have taken care of those things. And those parents who have abused their children, done things, wicked things, or evil things, their children, they're going to have to answer to God for it. No one's going to get away and escape anything. You might get away with here on this earth or you think so. But God's going to be dealing with you. And a lot of you are probably suffering right now because of the things you've done to your children. And you have not confessed it and repented and come to God and, and asked for forgiveness. You've not made things right with your children. You're walking around living the life that you weren't supposed to live. You're living beneath the life you're supposed to have because you've lost out a lot of your blessings because of the way you're treating your child. It's not just a spouse. God cares about everything. Every creation he's put on this earth, he cares. We're responsible for how we treat his people. Even when we have a ministry, we're responsible for how we treat the people in the ministry that he has put around us. And a lot of people take this stuff for granted. And you don't realize that you have children, then you, you're cursing yourself when you don't treat the children right that God has put in your life. And a lot of us are suffering because we did not treat either our child right, our parents right, our spouses right. And, and we're wondering why there's so much things going on. Why we can't get the success we want. Why there's so much hardship. Why there, there, there's so much, you know, lack of favor on our lives and God is saying to get it right to come to me and start doing it right God dealt with me a long time ago and started correcting me on how to treat my children as I really didn't know at that time because like I said I had a mom and a father and you know there wasn't much love in our home and it, it just you know but I had to go to God and be accountable I couldn't use the excuse that oh I didn't have anyone to treat me right I had to go to God and submit to him and ask him Lord show me how to be a good parent and that's what he did. So anyone can go to God and open your mouth and pray to him. If you want to pray for a job, you can pray for him to teach, teach you how to be a good mother. You could ask him to teach you how to be a good father and how to love. He will put the love in your heart for your child. Even if you don't love him, he will teach you how to love them. And this is a lot of times when household witchcraft happens is because people are holding on to bitterness. Even children are putting curses on their own parents because they, they're holding on to grudges of things that their parents have done to them. And this is something that, that you need to really be careful of. Like I said, no one is the judge and juror, okay? Only God is. And yes, it's wrong when parents do not treat their children right, but you are supposed to honor your mother and father. Whether they've treated you right or not, you still have the responsibility to honor them as your parent. And when you're doing wrong things to your parent, I've talked about this before, when you're cursing your parent and doing things and being disrespectful or putting curses on them, God is going, you're, he's going to deal with you and a lot of you, your lives, you know, are in jeopardy being cut short because you have not respected your parents or you're cursing them right now. There are people right now who are sitting here cursing their own parents you're putting sicknesses on them. You're, you're putting them in bondage. You're, you're attacking them and doing things to, to hurt them because you're angry at them, how they have treated you, how they have raised you, things they did not do right, things you have held them accountable for. And you don't even know the full story, but you have made yourself a judge and juror over their lives instead of taking it to God. And I'm not just talking this just to be talking. I hope you are getting some out of this. Please don't just dismiss this message because the Holy Spirit is talking. You're not going to make it in God's kingdom when you're sitting here doing all these wicked things. Family is so important to God. People do not understand it and they take their family for granted every day. Yes, no family is perfect. But when you work at it, when you have God in the midst of your family, that's why he says, put me first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added unto you. When you seek him every day, you get up every day, you make God a part of every part of your life, every aspect, things will get better. You can enjoy those things that seems burdensome. God will turn it into a lightweight. He says, all come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you are having trouble and struggling with your family, you can't get along. Go to God about it. I did that years ago when me and my mother could not get along for anything. It's like we hated each other. It was because I didn't even know what was going on. And it's like, I went to God because I was tired of that life. And I says, Lord, 
I want a relationship with my mom. I want it to change. I'm tired of this. And he did it. It might not have been right away, but he turned it around. Now, the thing I want to tell you, I'm not telling you this about household witchcraft to get you in your emotions and feelings to get you attacking the person who's doing it. Because a lot of you might start realizing there's people in your family who's had it out for you. This is not to hurt that person and attack them. This is to take it to God, okay? This is a spirit that we're dealing with. These are wicked spirits that are set out on an assignment to keep you from fulfilling God's purpose and destiny for your life. And he's using vulnerable people who are walking in their flesh. Like I said, he can use whoever he wants. If you got an open door, they might open the door through sin. Some sin that they've not let go of. And the God has now used them. I mean, the devil has now used them. He has played on their envy and their anger. He has played on the fact that they're bitter over the fact they never had a father or mother to raise them or take care of them. Or they didn't have a relationship with one of their parents. He has played on the fact that they've been abused as a child. Or, or maybe you were even born out of an abusive situation. Maybe they were raped and they didn't want you. And they, instead of seeking God and asking him to let, help them let go of that pain and unforgiveness, they projected it on you and abused you instead of, of coming to, to God. Because every child is a gift from God, whether it came out of abuse or not. It is not the child's fault that they got here and how they got here. It's not the child's fault. These are innocent children. They should not have to pay for what happened in your life. They should not have to bear, be born and nailed to a cross for a sin that was done to you that they had nothing to do with. And a lot of you are making your children pay. You have hated your child because you messed around with the wrong man or your, the man you had, the child would didn't treat you right or your marriage failed or, or, or that child came out of a, 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 a your your, uh, uh, infidelity an adulterous relationship that's not that child's fault and you are wrong to hold a grudge against that child you are wrong to put curses on that child you are wrong for everything you've done and God is saying today if you do not repent and confess to me you will not enter into my kingdom I will shut the doors in your face a lot of you sitting here thinking you're going to make it to heaven if you do not change what's going on right now, I'm going to let you know right now, you are sadly mistaken. You will be very, very surprised and hurt and dismayed on the day of judgment. Because you have been doing evil things to your family. God loves the family. He talks about family so much. That is one of the most important things to him is family. He would not have given the scriptures honor your father and mother so that your days may be long. Or he would not have given out the scriptures about husbands. Love your wives if you love your own selves. Or, or children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. He would not have given out all these scriptures about parents. Don't provoke your children anger. He loves the family. He takes precedence and a priority over the family. He honors the family. When the family is walking in, 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 in the right way and walking in the court and, and going according to God's will, he blesses that family. But when family has nothing but chaos and strife going on, this is when the door is open to Satan and household witchcraft can come in. And the enemy uses household witchcraft to destroy you, to destroy the entire family. You see nothing but separation, envy, strife, wickedness, bitterness, people hating each other, people putting out curses. Ain't no way you should be cursing your brethren, especially your blood. And God is going to deal with you. You're going to have to answer to him for that. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I try to get some sense into you to wake up. You might think that, oh, I'm harsh. A lot of people don't like to listen to me. And, you know, I'm okay with that. But I tell it how it is. I'm very blunt. Because God's very blunt. He's very blunt with me. There's no sugarcoating here. I'm here to win souls so you can make get souls into heaven. I'm not here to make you feel good. I, I like for you to feel good. But I prefer that your soul is saved. If it takes me, uh, if it takes you having to sacrifice feeling good so that you can make it into the kingdom of heaven, then... I prefer that because at the end of the day, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to help people's souls get saved. And I've been through all this stuff I talk about. I don't sit here just making up stuff. I have experience. I've lived experience over 30 years of experience. I have lived it. I have gone through so much and God has allowed me to go through that so that I could help you all. So I could speak to you today like I'm doing right now. If you choose to listen to me, I hope you do. But if you don't, then, you know, you're not hurting anyone but yourself. It's okay. I don't get offended anymore. I used to. Like, okay, they don't listen. But I don't get offended anymore because God has shown me, you know, it's not me. It's not me. They're rejecting. They're rege you're rejecting him. So 
in the next video, this is going to be, I'm going to do a two part series for this. I've talked about what household witchcraft is and how it starts. And the next video I make, it's going to be talking about how to fight against household witchcraft. Now, I hope these videos are helping you. If it is, please share them. I like everyone to listen to these videos. If, if you find your, it can be helpful for you or you know someone who could benefit from watching these videos, please share with them. Thank you.